In this video in our ongoing series on threat modeling, we're going to talk about how you scope your threat modeling efforts uh, and how you kick off the threat modeling process. So those of you who've been following us so far um, are probably just about ready to get started here, right? Uh, you're, uh, you've heard a lot of the, the high-level pre prereqs and uh, why it's valuable and what do you need to do and who's buying you need to get and all that kind of stuff. And now you're saying, okay, let's get started. So uh, hypothetically speaking, um, you've got a threat modeling activity that you're going to, to, to kick off and uh, you want to know, how do I start? Where do I, what's first, right? So your first, uh, your first meetings should be around how do I scope the threat modeling effort? Because um, uh, you don't need to threat model the entire thing. Um, you need to threat model pieces of your entire thing, right? Where that thing is a system or a piece of software or whatever. Uh, don't threat model operating systems. Microsoft already does threat modeling ap uh, activities on their operating system. Do not uh, threat model uh, other pieces of software uh, over which you have no control. Threat model your stuff, right? And whether that means you've connect interconnected a bunch of systems in order to meet some business objective or that means that you've written a custom piece of code, doesn't matter. Threat model your stuff and what you have control over. So there's several different ways that you can uh, you can scope your threat modeling effort. First of all, you can, you can pick use cases. You can say, and I don't mean UML use cases, I mean regular high-level use cases. How is our system used? We're, you can do this. Uh, you can say, I'm going to threat model the piece of the system where the user logs in and enters a credit application. I'm going to just threat model that. Or you can, say, you can uh, chunk up your threat modeling activity by saying system functionality. You can say, uh, I'm going to threat model only the pieces of the system that do this. So I'm going to threat model the feeds from this system to that system, the feed from the data warehouse back to our system. You can also threat model based on uh, chunking up the architecture. You can say, well, I'm really worried about the satellite feed here. I'm really worried about this. Um, you can chunk it up that way. Uh, after you've scoped it, then you need to kick off the meetings. A uh, couple uh, hints there. First of all, set expectations. You have to have everybody at the meetings. Make it a short period of time. Do not do a six-week threat model. Do it over three weeks. A uh, couple hours is about all you can expect out of people before they start drifting off and their eyes roll in the back of their head. Um, let them know how often you're going to meet and how long. Secondly, lay out a schedule. Tell them when you're going to meet so that if there's vacations in there, you know that you can't, um, you know that you're not supposed to, uh, have people in and out and in and out and in and out of the process, right? You need to have continuous participation in order for it to be successful. And uh, thirdly, do not proceed without the business. If the business cannot be there, then do not conduct a threat modeling session. End of story, right? So that's how you kind of scope uh, your effort, what you're going to do, and then, then that's how you kick it off. Uh, in the next session, we'll talk about actually um, getting going.